hello lovely people welcome back to my channel it's candy here i want to do today a six month catch up on my depth year we're halfway through six months in. this could very easily feel like a confessional video for me because there have been purchases if i still had the mindset that I had at the end of 2020 when I announced a depth year and I announced no buying, no decks, no books, no clothes. If I still had that mindset, then this would be a confessional video. But I have to say, without it sounding like an excuse, that my depth year perception has kind of, it's, it's shifted for me over the last six months. I sat down today and I thought, what was the whole point of doing depth year? If you've, if you've broken those rules and you purchase some books and you purchase some decks and you purchase some clothes, what was the point? It's still a depth year because the whole point of depth year was to go deep with things I already had to feel less scattered within acquisition of just buy, 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 buy and everything just sitting there. So it was to unscatter myself, to bring focus in, to go deep on where I wanted to acquire knowledge and skills. And also to go deep and to focus on self-nurturing and self-loving practices. With that in mind, with depth year being about going deep, being re-centred and not as scattered, then I am still very, very firmly still on depth year. However, there are some purchases which I will be showing you, I will be sharing. So, depth year with purchasing, which is what I said when I filmed my uh, charity shop haul, be because the charity shop's opened for the first time in a year and a half. My favorite charity shop, which is so cheap, I think to have driven past and not allowed myself to stop would have been like self-harm. Oh, I bought all sorts and it was glorious. It was cheap, it was glorious. And it lifted, it lifted my spirits. It was a focus on what do I need? Now, have I then gone out every other week after that and spent 20 pound in charity shops every week? No, I did it once. I took Tilly back to spend her pocket money and spent one pound on my white horse and my other altar, and that's it. We're in depth here. We're focused, we're self-nurturing, we're not going mad. That's how I'm doing depth year. And I did say in that video that it was depth year with shopping. <laughs> so I'm claiming a depth year with shopping with a focus on unscattering myself and being focused. How's my depth year going? Let's do an update. So things that I have gone deep with so far, I picked a deck a month to go really deep with. These were decks that I already had. Sorry about the traffic noise. The window's open, I'm absolutely bored. Decks, I've got everything stacked up around me. Decks I've gone really deep with. I already owned, I didn't purchase these. The Osho Zen, this took up quite a large proportion of my start of the year. The way I connected with this deck was I sat with the guidebook and I read all the guidebook about the majors. And then on Lisa Pepez's channel, she's got the most brilliant de deep dive video for the Osho Zen where she compares the Osho Zen cards to the Rider Waite cards. So I watched that video in sections. I, I read the guidebook for the majors and then I flipped through the majors after reading the guidebook along with Lisa on that video. Then I switched the video off, got the guidebook back out and did the same for each suit one at a time. So it was a real event getting to know this deck and it just put this deck so strongly in my heart and soul. I loved it. The Osho Zen. Another deck that I went deep with, again, this was a 20, all of these decks are 2020 purchases, was the Tarot of the Spirit, which linked with reading um, the Long Milo Duquette book about the Thoth as well. Also the two huge books that come with this, which I also have, 
This deck is stunningly beautiful. The aim was to study this deck with the big books that come with it and to learn about the Tree of Life and Kabbalah because this deck comes with a Tree of Life overlay that goes on top of the cards. I just wanted to find out more about how the Tree of Life and Kabbalah works as a system and how it links to tarot. This book hasn't been touched yet, but I have been reading this one. Now this one is um, a lot of the card meanings. It's more of the guidebook. It's a very intense, deep, very um, in-depth guidebook. And I was reading this as I was pulling readings throughout the month. So this is almost read. This one didn't get touched on. I got to the end of the month and wanted to start on another deck. So I thought, well, I'm just going to revisit it. This is still ongoing. Then another deck that I went deep with was Aria, the Magician's deck. Again, a really, really interesting magic laced deck with the most incredible imagery. I have to say that the imagery that pulled me to this deck with these amazing backs was the um, the feather artwork, the cards that look like this. These cards, look, these winged creatures and the rendition of all the feathers. I liked the fact that it gets you exploring different realms of reality and the underworld. I spent a whole month working with these cards and reading the guidebook as well, which you buy separately. It's a really, really in-depth guidebook with just a description of all the cards. So I did spend a month going deep with that, which I loved. It made me really... It made me really confused actually about how to use the deck. It didn't open up the deck like say sitting studying a tarot deck and its guidebook would open it up so you could use it. It didn't do that for me. It made me more confused. It made me realise that I possibly couldn't use this as a tarot deck. Um, so that then there was questions of well how do I how do I then use it? I love it. I can see how magical it is. How do I begin to use this deck? And then I realised that there is a whole course of magic and magical development that goes with this deck. So my instinct was to just order the three big volumes of the, the course because there are three different levels of study. In each level, there's about 10 sections of each study to get to each level. And then with depth year in mind and with my focus, I thought, well, I've just calm it down a minute. This might not be a system for you. So what I did instead, this is one of my purchases, is I bought just the first section of the apprentice level book. So this isn't the whole of the apprentice level. There are a number of books if you're buying them in these small books. This is just two modules. This is module one, the core skills. And it also has module two in it, which is patterns and maps in magic. Mm -hmm. So this is just two modules. I think there are about eight or 10 modules in each level. So the apprentice level would have a number of modules in. I think it might be eight modules, but this is just the first two. This was, I think I paid five six pounds for this just for me to see so that was another deep dive which led to a purchase and that's okay okay another deep dive dive deck was the true heart intuitive tarot by rachel true um, i spent another four five six weeks working with this pairing it with other decks these are the backs um i love this deck I've had real fun working with this deck. So again, I read the guidebook, which is wonderful. Rachel adds a lot of her own personal insights and her own personal life story to match the, the majors, which I loved. Uh, and it was it's just been a beautiful deck to work with. So that was another deep dive deck, the True Heart Intuitive Tarot. 
then I think one of my biggest deep dives that has had the most impact so far in this first six months has been my deep dive with the deck, The Dreams of Gaia. It's a different system. Again, I think I've got a thing for different systems. Raven Falan's artwork just really speaks to me. I spent a long time really studying this guide. This was the deck that I found a way that I really liked deep diving with a deck. It's my single morning card pull with a matching oracle or another matching tarot to clarify. And then in the in the evening at night, another single card pull as well to look back on the day and journaling with those two single card pulls which say over a 31 day month that's 62 cards you've almost studied the whole deck there and then throwing in say weekly tarot spreads with six or seven cards i found that over the space of a month the whole deck was really studied and i loved it so so very much that that led to another purchase. And again, I'm gonna say this every time because this is not a confessional. I'm completely okay with that. It's not open yet because I'm contemplating saving all these for birthday and Christmas and then I don't have to go mad at the end of the year in November and December, justifying purchasing birthday and Christmas things. But I bought the pocket version, which is borderless it's matte, it can go in my bag everywhere with me. It was on sale, <laughs> dreams of Gaia. And then an unexpected deep dive was a gift deck that I ended up going deep with, which is the carnival at the end of the world. Now, a friend of mine gifted me this deck. Um, she'd got two copies her copy was a favourite deck of hers too. I was completely floored um, receiving this deck. I, I spent a month talking and journaling and again doing my morning and evening card pull and then weekly readings with it. Across a month I read the guidebook. So have I gone deep with the decks that I've already got? Absolutely. Most of them have been paired with the Iris Oracle. Those aren't the only decks because of course I've been pairing all of these decks with other decks. So these aren't the only decks that I've gone deep with, but um, those are my main focus decks, which did lead to a couple of purchases, but that's okay. I haven't bought any more tarot books. I have been Going back to basic, I've been working through Tarot 101, which is one of the very first books I ever bought on Tarot. And this one, which both of these two, yeah, yeah. I think if you're a beginner, are absolutely brilliant. This is Liz Dean's The Ultimate Guide to Tarot, which is just fantastic for taking you through each card, which is brilliant. This one is slightly different. It takes you through kind of themes like the darker card, major arcana, minor. It gives, it's more thematic, this book. These two together, if you are a complete beginner, are fantastic. I've also been slowly working through 78 Degrees of Wisdom, which when I first bought it, right at the start of this journey, I it was a bit much. I needed a bit more study first. These two, were definitely my entry level in. This one is useful now. So um, all of these were books I'd already got. So these are what I'm going deep with. And of course, I've just started this month on Ethany's Tarot Court, which is brilliant. This book as well, I've studied all the way through. This is Practical Tarot Techniques. This kind of makes you think about a queer and asking questions. It gives you different exercises ideas about making up spreads based on questions more of a global approach rather than card by card this isn't card by card but all of those books have been my going deep with tarot for the first six months i'm going to show you two decks that probably um are my impulse buys i was watching lisa papez's say yes to the deck. She's got people coming in trying to choose a deck and spoiler, 
I am coming up on one of those episodes because I did have the joy of sitting with Lisa and Peggy one night via, via Zoom and filming my own Say Yes to the Deck episode. But watching, um, I think it was Wes's Say Yes to the, the Deck, they shared this deck, the Bohemian Animal Tarot. I have to admit that I immediately upon seeing a certain card i paused the video and immediately purchased this deck which i am going to do a walkthrough of but i'm going to show you the card it was also the card that made lisa square was the temperance card there is no way that a deck with a temperance card like that is not coming into my collection it was really really cheap it's gold gilded as well come on the backs are fantastic if i was going by my initial rules of depth here this would be a confession but with a focus on self-love and self-care this was a very fast unthought out purchase which i was completely certain about i flicked through this deck once last night it is beautiful and then a splurge deck, this one, again in plastic packaging because it is going to be put aside for a birthday or Christmas present to myself. The Oracle of Mystical Moments. I've been online trying to find the tarot deck, which is now on order. It's not here yet, but the, is it the Tarot of Mystical Moments? Or does it have a different title? Anyway, it's the tarot deck, not the Oracle that matches this. I was online looking for that because us in the UK, we've not been able to find it anywhere, but I found this reduced. Last week, the tarot deck has suddenly appeared and it was really, really reduced. I think it was in WH Smith, so that's coming. So I've got the tarot and the oracle, which will be put aside for Christmas for myself. That was another splurge. Sale prices got me on these. And within that sale, I saw this deck. The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. There was absolutely no way that this wasn't going to be purchased on the spot because Melody Beatty is really fundamental in my healing. Um, when I was first recovering from family scapegoating and having to go no contact and narcissistic um, conditioning and abuse, I was sat in therapy for a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder after the hell that people put me through. And um, I can remember one day one day not wanting to go in because I'd had a phone call out of the blue from my mother who immediately went into a gaslighting attack and within three seconds she destroyed me on the other end of the phone. I was about 10 minutes before my appointment with my therapist who was literally a minute down the road and um, I hung up the phone incapable of even movement let alone going to a therapy session he then called me to find out where i was and realized i couldn't even speak and he just said come down i know you're just up the road come down to me right now this is really going to be a really important session we need to talk through what's happened in that session with makeup pouring down my face and bubbles of snot coming out of my nose because I was so destroyed. I managed to gasp out in sobs what had just occurred. And he very calmly looked at me and he said, you do realize you're codependent, don't you? I had never heard of the word, the phrase codependency in my life ever. I didn't know what it meant. He told me, when you leave, you need to go and buy the books of Melody Beatty. I bought this one, Codependent No More, which was life changing for me as a textbook codependent surrounded by cluster B personalities. This was eye opening to say the least. I've then gone on to read Beyond Codependency and also Melody Beatty's Guide to the 12 Steps of Codependence. 
all three books are life-changing. That was my entry point really into um, not understanding narcissistic abuse because there were other books that came first. This was the entry doorway to, to claiming the part that I played in it, which I think is the point you get to when you're ready to heal. What what lessons were there for me? What should what what lessons do I need to learn? Narciss narcissism and gaslighting and scapegoating is for other people to carry. Codependency is my bag to carry. It then led into other fantastic books like Pete Walker complex post-traumatic stress disorder from surviving to thriving this was amazing also this which my which rupert managed to get hold of as a puppy out of fully feeling this is another pete walker book i've got a whole bookshelf of books but melody beatty was my entry doorway in so when i realized there was a deck to do with her work it was a no-brainer. Now these are affirmation cards that have a keyword on the front and then advice on the back. So this one is solving problems and it says, today I will face any problems that are mine and work to seek solutions. I realise that there are always challenges in life, but I know that I have the ability to solve them and grow stronger in the process. So it, it's it's a keyword and then advice. So we've got getting calm. Today I will stop searching for happiness outside of myself. If I am in a frenzied state, I'll get calm, get back on track, and remember that the key to happiness is inside me. Often after I've become peaceful and accepting what I want comes with ease. This is pure melody bt words and text and i am so pleased i got this this deck rejecting shame i mean my gosh today i will learn to reject shame shame is an overwhelming sense that who i am isn't good enough i realize that i am good enough and that my imperfections are part of being human i let go of shame so there's this today i will message on the back of each absolutely fantastic okay, then i want to come on to another category the work of people i know and respect online and the fact i wanted to support them so this book the art of cosmic creation um, this is by the gorgeous amber amber torn who you will probably know from her youtube channel lavender moon this is a channeled book where she speaks with this entity called Lavender Moon, this orb-shaped being that she sees and that gives her information. This book is absolutely awesome. I'd spoken to Amber a few times on the phone. I'd got the wrong end of the stick with this book. I thought it was some, I thought it was more like just a ghost story book. And she went, no, no, it's this, this and this. And I suddenly thought, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so useful to read. It's more than useful, it's fantastic. Um, Amber, if you're watching, I love it. I think you're fantastic, you're, you're a brilliant writer. This was a purchase, not only to support Amber, but because this book is damn fantastic and it was just what I needed. Another book purchase from somebody I know and love online is Kellyanne Maddox, Rebel Witch. I haven't started reading this yet. How can the wonderful Kellyanne write a book and us not support it when it first comes out? So I ordered this um, when it first came out. I knew it was going to be a depth year um, break in no buy. I knew that straight away, but that's fine. This is going to be put aside for Christmas. I struggle at Christmas because at Christmas, the kids go to their dad's on Boxing Day for seven, eight days straight. And it breaks me every year. I need some books to read. This is my Christmas present. This is going to be broken open on Boxing Day. I'm going to sit with Kellyanne and I'm going to get over those Boxing Day blues. So the next one, which I haven't read yet, it is Courtney Green's book destiny. Courtney has the YouTube channel 
Aries witchcraft. Um, I think Courtney has some really interesting, fantastic ideas on her channel. Um, she talks about demons and that sort of darker energy a lot as well. This is a novel. I think this is her first book. Courtney, forgive me if I'm wrong. I haven't read it yet. Again, it's going to be put away for Christmas. I am getting a stack of books together for my seven days of heartbreak, which always comes. There's no point trying to hide it. It always comes. And with people that I love on YouTube, Lisa's book, the self-worth path i absolutely love lisa i think she's fantastic i think lisa and peggy are brilliant um friends on here um lisa couldn't possibly write a book and me not purchase it now one of the bigger purchases within a category to do with friends on youtube really does link in many ways to my depth year now i've said before that i have a depth year buddy and once a month we um catch up on facetime call we catch up we tell each other what we've what we've been doing our thinking with depth year whether we've made purchases what we didn't buy what we're going deep on and just life in general and it has been hands down the very best thing about depth year it's made me so grateful that I'm in depth here just because I reach, we reached out to each other and there's a real friendship there now. And that's the beautiful Renee over at Meadowlark Mystics. Now, Renee, which I know I've mentioned loads of times, but I simply cannot mention it enough because I am awestruck with Renee, but she has been lost in channeled artwork and she has produce the most spectacular collage artwork which i've linked before but i will link it again she's opened an etsy shop as well she has um divine feminine archetypes talking to her and guiding her in her collage work to say i've been blown away by it is just the understatement of the century because I've been talking to Renee in the background and I've kind of seen her thoughts on all of this kind of evolve. It was a slow evolvement, then suddenly wham! And I knew that she'd been smacked by some sort of divine channeled magic. And then all this artwork appeared and I I don't, I don't know who was more surprised her or me. I just was floored by it truly art witchery in practice and the pieces that she's making are unbelievable and there's an oracle with that coming as well which is so exciting and when she first opened the etsy shop i am proud to say that i am the first person that purchased some art from her i bought some of her plaques they are upstairs completely unopened ready for my main christmas present that is my main christmas present to myself however as i was on her etsy shop and watching the videos over and over and trying to decide which of the pieces i wanted to purchase for myself because there were so many and they're so beautiful basically i wanted them all the mary energy just came through and i've i've never i've never felt drawn to mary as a archetype before i've i've never felt drawn to it because of my past in the christian church all of that was something that i wanted to have distance from however renee's artwork opened a door for me and i it was a niggle in the back of my head and unbeknownst to me one of the pieces that i bought from renee was her mary piece because i just went on the visuals i didn't really look at the names or i didn't look at the names at all of the goddesses and she said oh you've got mary and I've also got the maiden one, which is Mary as a young girl. So I was picking up Mary energy and I bought two of the Mary plaques. I think there's something there. There was a niggle there. And I had pulled my Bible back out to try and do bibliomancy with it because of feeling pulled to Mary. It didn't work. It quickly got put away within like two minutes. 
but that Mary pull was still, it was still there, it wouldn't go. This is before I even knew that the two plaques I'd ordered were both Mary plaques. So I went online, this was in the sale, I think I paid £10 for it. I also purchased this, which is Clarissa Pinkola Estes' book. Now, Clarissa wrote Women Who Run With The Wolves, which is my all-time favourite book ever. When I realised she'd written a book about Mary, then I purchased these two together, which I think I'm going to study before Christmas comes so that when I open Renee's artwork, I've already used both of these. But then unbeknownst to me, Renee mentioned to me that both of those pieces were Mary that I'd ordered. Plus on her latest video, she shares both of these, has her, her gateway in this book and this deck which i thought was magical synchronicity supporting friends really important looking ahead to when i know i break down in the year boxing day to get some books in but using that as an opportunity to support friends as well really important to me but the goddesses that i already work with focus there is still there i did a big big long study this year in the last six months with this book Morpheus Ravenna's The Book of the Great Queen which is a book about the Morrigan in all her forms with Maka as well who's really important to me also Bridget of course which was another book that I'd already got which was a deep dive and then in the first quarter I broke depth here with buying this book because following my focus on where I'm going and my knowledge and my deep diving these two books and these two books being studied made me realise that the Dagda was already present in my practice and I wanted to understand him more. So this has been read as well. So but what these books have done, these books have made me completely obsessed with Genius Loki, understanding that I'm connected to place and therefore centering me very firmly within Celtic traditions, the magic of the UK, sites of the UK, places in the UK, including Ireland, which I've always had a call for. It's just really focused me on that's what my practice is. And it's made me a little bit obsessed with finding out everything I can about magic, magical history, traditions and myths of the UK and Ireland. So, that has led me probably into my biggest spending within depth year and again i'm okay with it because am i scattered no i'm not scattered this isn't scattered buying this is deep study and hours of study that has focused me down so i know that this is the next step so books now that are currently in my collection that are really important for me to read. I bought the Book of English Magic, just to find out more about where I'm from. I bought this, which was secondhand, which was dirt cheap, which is in Enchanted Britain, mystical sites in rural, rural England, Scotland and Wales. So I grew up on the Welsh borders, up near the Black Mountains and uh, near Hay on Wye, the book town, which you might have heard. Uh, so, Celtic origins and enchanted Britain is, is it's my heritage and with lockdown lifting as well and me feeling stir crazy in the house part of me just wants to get in the car and go traveling around enchanted Britain to find all these sites it's a combination of what I need now for getting out of the house and also my next step on my spiritual practice Another second-hand book I found was this one, which is a little bit battered. You can see it's a, a really old second-hand book. The Atlas of Britain with pictures and maps. And it takes it county by county and lays out where you can find all the magical sacred sites in Britain. <sighs> Just so excited. And then I did splurge because I was Googling all of these books to try and find secondhand books like this. Of course, Facebook threw up some ad adverts because everything's linked. And this came up 
Great British Folklore Superstition Map. So this map gives you 1,400 locations for um, spooky, supernatural, witchcraft, legendary myth sites around Britain. So it definitely, definitely is not a no buy depth year, but it is a unscattered focus depth year. There isn't mindless spending, there isn't mindless ignoring of things on shelves. Um, I feel like my spiritual path is deepening and has a has targets and goal, goals isn't the right word. It has a direction that's right for me. So I feel very focused, very nurtured. I feel connected through community through these purchases as well, which is lovely. It's just been really fun and there probably won't be another spend for the rest of the year because that's all going to take me a while to get through and because it is focused buying I know that this is the next step and this is going to take a while to get through so an unscattered buy year. I hope you enjoyed that update, I hope you found it interesting. If you're on a depth year I hope that it gave you some ideas of the way you could go with it. If you're feeling that saying no to buying is actually feeling damaging, I hope again this gives you permission to step into a unique map for depth here for yourself. I think the word for me is unscattered, an unscattered year where everything that I brought in, it isn't scattered, it isn't grabbing, it isn't for no reason. If you're on depth year, tell me how you're doing. Tell me if you've changed your ideas about depth year, if you've adapted something. You might have been spending like I am and have shut it down totally. How are you finding that? Tell me in the comments. I would absolutely love to know. Or if you've done a depth year in the past and you want to share how it went for you, then let me know. If you are adamant you would never do a depth year, let me know as well. I would just love to know your thoughts on it because it is really interesting to me because I'm in the middle of it myself. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.